Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We are going to install our wideband on the Silverado. We gotta get that on so we're ready to tune when we put the supercharger on. The supercharger will be next. Uh, I've got everything I need, I believe. So anyway, let's get started. So where we're starting is gonna be underneath the truck. This is gonna be your driver's side. Right here is an O2 sensor bung that gets welded on. I had this welded on an exhaust shop. Once you get this welded on, you can take your sensor that comes with your wideband. It's gonna be right here. You're gonna take your sensor and you're gonna screw it into here. Make sure you don't cross thread it. It's the last thing you wanna do. Okay. And then we're gonna tighten it with a wrench. And I would just, I mean, I, I wouldn't tighten it too much. You don't wanna strip it. Take your wrench. It's just like an O2 sensor and just give it a good tighten. And what we're gonna do after that is we're gonna take our cable and we're gonna run it up through there and through the firewall. One thing I forgot before we go up top, I'm gonna zip tie this to the, the other O2 sensor wiring so we can keep it from hitting this cat, the catalytic converter, which is right here. Cause, I mean, I don't wanna melt it. So let's do that real quick. So also what you wanna do is keep it, you wanna keep it away from the transmission right here too. Cause that gets pretty warm. All right, now we're gonna move on to putting it up. So what we're gonna take is our harness right here. Here's our harness. We're gonna take the end that plugs into the sensor. Go ahead and plug it in like so. Then we're gonna run this end up along the back side of the firewall and in through the truck. This is what will plug into your gauge. What we're gonna do is we're gonna run up, I don't know if you can see it, but we're gonna run up along the brake lines right here and then we're going to run it in a different position because i'm afraid if i run it straight i'm going to run into where the manifold it's going to be too close to it and we're going to end up melting a wire and i don't want to do that all right so let's move this we'll run this wire up real quick if we zip tie it here and then up here i think we're going to be good and it should be away from the heat enough i probably need to i probably need to get some heat wrap or something might not be a bad idea. So let me show you what I was doing in that part right there. I was doing is I was taking this the wire, taking it from down. Let's see if we can see it. You can see the uh, you see the harn the spot right here where the harness is. Now it's just pulling it up through here to come up on this side, right here. So here's our wire, come up on the other side with the brake booster. And then we are gonna run it right through this boot right here. And that comes out inside the truck, underneath the dash, we'll come down and put it to where we're gonna put the, uh, where we're gonna put the wide band gauge. We got it pushed through. We went through the top of this. We were gonna go through the bottom, but it was hard to find a spot. But we went through right here on the top and see the cable. Got a little excess, I'm gonna pull it up. I'd rather have the slack up here, so that way it doesn't touch the exhaust manifold. So we're gonna go ahead and just take a zip tie, and we're going to make sure there's the slack is all up this way, like this. Zip tie it like that. Now we'll move on to the inside of the truck. Here's our, the other side of our cable. In this part, we're gonna run up through here and we're gonna put our gauge right here, okay? So, here's our gauge. And then we have our data cable and power cable that goes to the gauge. So, let's get to installing this stuff. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have to pop this panel off right here. This panel comes off the side here first before you pull this out because it clips into this. All right, make sure you take this off first. Let's get our wire running up through here. We're also gonna go ahead and get our data cable ready. So we're gonna mount 
our gauge just like this. It won't hit the uh, hit the headlight switch, and it'll be out of the way of this. We can still use this if we want to, but we're gonna stick this in here. I've just gotta cut some holes right here and here for the wires to come through. All right, so we're gonna find our power source. And I think this is probably gonna be a good one right here. So we've got a prong on top of the fuse box right here. We're gonna go ahead and stick our uh, positive side of our bolt ohm meter there. We're gonna stick our negative on a ground, okay? Right now, if you look at the bolt ohm meter, it's showing zero. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the key in the ignition, and then I'm gonna turn it forward like we're starting it. Look at that, 12 volts. Turn it off, zero. Okay, so the reason you wanna do that is you wanna make sure that your power source that you're running to this gauge is gonna be uh, remote power, as they call it. So when you turn the truck on, the power comes to it. When you turn the truck off, the power goes away from it. So that way it shuts off and it's not draining your battery. Now what we'll do is we'll take, we've got some, we've got some uh, fuse taps. Okay, after really paying attention to this, I noticed that I don't need to use <laughs> that uh, fuse tap, I can literally just plug this on here. I have no idea why I didn't notice that yesterday. You can just put your terminal on in here and it'll plug right into that spot and you don't have to worry about using a fuse tap because there's no fuse there. Anyway, I just wanted to update that. I've changed this. So we'll take our positive and put it on that, po that post and we'll take our negative and we'll find a way to put it behind this bolt right here for our ground. Okay, so what we're gonna do here, I'm gonna come in here I'm gonna loosen this bolt and I'm gonna put my ground wire up behind here because this is all metal and this grounds to the chassis. Here's my terminal. I'm gonna go ahead and cut my terminal open like this. So that way I can slip this up under either here, probably not, probably here. We're gonna test this gauge real quick and make sure it lights up and make sure everything is hooked up right. You ready? Yep. There it is. Look at that. It lights up. Let's make sure it turns off. No power. everything in That's how you install a wideband. Of course, we did it on a Silverado. You may be doing it on something else, but the one we used, I wanted to show y'all real quick. The wideband we used, an AEM 30-0334. The reason we use that one, because it has the OBD2 pass-through, so that way we can use it with our HP tuners. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day.